Mike Gary Moore here. Uh, this video is about uh, the main thing that I just took away from Gary Moore's playing when I was studying him. And this guy, if you, if all you think about when you hear the, his name is Still Got the Blues, then go to YouTube, look up Gary Moore solos, and then just look at this guy. He's all intensity, he's all over the place, right? And that's really what this style of music is about, the, the blues rock style. Uh, and really think, you know, look at the, your favorite blues rock guitarists and just look at how intense they play. So, and we can learn that. That's a skill. And in my upcoming course, uh, I have a whole section on that and how to play with intensity. And most people say, well, you can't learn that. You can learn the techniques, but then you have to, like, just find it within yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> of course you have to do that, but it's a skill. You can learn to do it and you can train and practice that into yourself. And I have a specific system actually of how to use these different tools of intensity and do it every day for just a little bit. So you really train yourself to just turn on when you play and really play with intensity. And that's what most people talk about when they talk blues and you know, it's all about feeling, man. Yeah, but you can learn to play like that, right? It's a skill. And then when you have the skill, you can learn to, to create art with that and really express yourself. And if you, if you long or you, you're looking for a way into that, then go look at Gary Moore and just look at his, how, he, how he moves when he plays. It's like a full body experience, right? But in this video, we're just gonna look at a couple of tools that I can give you in 10 minutes that will absolutely uh, get you on the right path to playing with high intensity. And then in the next video, we're going to look at some of the fast elements he's using that you can use to really phrase and play fast ones and, and really you know play fast in a way where you're very expressive and you have total freedom to both play, uh, go from very slow, emotional lines to the more fiery, faster lines, right? And in an easy way, actually. So, um, but in this video, let's look into it. When we're talking intensity, right? I, I once saw a couple of Italians. I was in Rome, Europe, um, it's Italy. And I saw, you know, a, a guy driving a car. He went out of the car and he was all arguing with a, with a, bi a guy on the bike. And then the, I just sat on the restaurant with a glass of wine watching these two just go at it, right? And then a, a police officer came by and he just, you know, turned over, got out of his car, and then he started screaming at them. <laughs> Instead, I, my expectation was that he, was, he would say to the, hey, take it easy, guys, let's figure out you know, what's right and wrong and let's move on from there, but he doesn't. He just starts, you know, yelling at them. So we got these, and that's, you know, where I come from, police officers don't do that. They go low key, right? We're not, don't rock the boat in Denmark. We're like more just like, calm, take it easy now, but not in Italy. So that's intensity, intensity of emotion. And you need that when you're playing. Instead of expressing yourself that, yeah, that's a good idea. You say, yeah, that's a good idea, right? Instead of being just a little bit sad, you're depressed, right? <laughs> and you have to play like that. So how do we do that? Well, we use all the tools we have. Vibrato, sliding, bending, playing hard and fast and playing, you know, all the different uh, stuff we can do in order to influence the notes. We just pile them on because they're all emotional tools, basically, right? So, and just let's pick one of them, breaks, right? That's a, I just talked about vibrato, bending, and so, but let's, let's just investigate. Just with a focus, if you decide, and this is what my system is all about, you decide on an, on an emotional tool that you wanna use and then you practice using it, right? And just play around with this. You can go download this jam track that I have right here. Let me just move the, eh, so I can, you know, don't have to stretch as far. Um, download this jam track uh, from our website. You just click the link below if you're on, if you're on YouTube, and you can download the jam track and this video. Um, but so what I'm going to do here is just look into and focus on the breaks I take, and I'm going to play something very simple in order for me to not be caught up in what I'm playing. I'm just going to focus on a couple of notes and then the breaks, right? And by focusing, I develop my abilities. So let's just start from over here so you can really get into it. A blues.
get my drift here. So by focusing suddenly, I step out of the usual blah, blah, blah I'm playing when I'm soloing, and I start focusing on my breaks. And that conscious focus really allows, my, allows me to develop in this area. And if I do this every day, if I focus on the breaks I use when I play every single day for just five or 10 minutes, you know, for a month, then I'm sure that this is gonna be part of my playing style without me thinking about it, because that's how we develop. We focus on something consciously until it's unconscious, right? Just like when you're trying to drive a stick shift car, you have to focus on everything in the beginning, right? The clutch, the stick, everything, and watching the pedestrians and the cars and braking and everything. And then as you do it enough, it becomes automatic. So. The conclusion is, if you do anything enough consciously by focusing on the parts and the bits, then gradually it becomes part of just blah. It's easy, right? So the same thing goes here, uh, that if you focus on it consciously every single day for an extended period of time, then it becomes automatic. Let's do something else. Let fo let's focus on, again, intensity is like, instead of just being happy, you're just ecstatic, right? Instead of being depressed, you're just totally in despair, right? So. Let's try and do that with vibrato. Like in a, in a normal song, a normal, you know, any other style, you would, you would really like. Right? That would be a normal way of playing. But in, in, in blues rock, you really go. Right? Again, there's a little fast. And there's something very slow, a long note, and something very fast. It's contrasts again, right? But let's just focus on the vibrato. I can do the very violent vibrato, or I can do the... Right? So again, here I'm really focusing on the intensity of my vibrato. I don't want to go. Ah, I want to go. Ah, right. And for that, uh, you know, you can you can do a controlled vibrato, where you control the tempo, or you can create a spasm in your hand that's just a. S and we use that a lot. Right to, yeah, to create that kind of intensity. Right. Let's do something else. Just the last little example here, and then you can go practice with the jam track and really focus consciously on how to use these things. Bending, right? <clears throat> That's something the guitar is amazing at as well. Try doing any of this on a saxophone or a piano or a violin, you can't. The guitar has this enormous range of expression. It's a joke, so use it, right? So let me, bending, right? We go. We can bend a lot of notes. But how do you bend in the extreme? You go... You start bending in minor thirds, right? Because in the blue scale or minor pentatonic, you have whole tones and then you have minor thirds. So try, for instance, to take in the key of A blues here, Take the 12th and the 14th fret on the G string. The next note there would be up in the 17th fret, right? So try bending up to that, play the 12th, then the 14th, and then bend all the way up to it. Right? And then, just a little example, <laughs> then up here on the uh, B string, you have the 13th and the 15th fret. Those are pentatonic notes. And then you have another whole tone up to the 17th fret. So these three, 13, 15, and 17 on the B string are just pentatonic notes. And then you have the blue note in the 16th fret, right? So that means that you actually, you, if you bend the note in the uh, 13th fret, 
can bend it, you can bend it up one halter. And you might want to support your third finger bending by placing your second and first finger on the same string behind it. But you can also bend it up to the blue note. Right? Right, and then you have the, the same bend, uh, range of bending. Uh, Right? <laughs> so that's really cool. And that brings me to the last little point here, that Gary Moore is using sliding in combination with bending. So it sounds crazy, right? So if you take this note again, in the 14th fret on the G string, and you slide up to it with your third finger, just hit the note to start the movement, and then hit the string at any point here. You just start the movement. Right? And then you practice ending in the 14th fret and then once you hit it you start bending well, it creates an insane sound I think I'm out of tune now from bending that much and the forceful vibrato, all of that. So have fun with it. And remember, if you choose a conscious focus before you start soloing, like the breaks, like the bending, like the vibrato, then you will absolutely implement that into your playing if you do it over time, if you repeat the ritual of doing it a little each day. It's not enough to just do it occasionally. You must have a, like a habit each day because your, your soloing skills are basically just a bundle of habits that you do on the fretboard. We all know that, right? Sometimes we get bored with our habits. And to break those habits, it's not enough to just do it once or twice. You must do an exercise each and every day. So I warmly recommend that you start right now. Download the jam track from the website, click the link, and then start practicing pausing and just see what that does to your playing after one week of doing it every single day a little, or two weeks, or three or four weeks, right? So uh, click the link, download this video and the jam track and get started.